journey begins at the head of a winding driveway just off the main drag of the Wright State University campus that leads to, well, nothing anymore. Where a house once stood, there's now just an awkward sloping hill. To the left of this little patch of grass is Rockefeller Cemetery. While the main area was built to honor those who donated their bodies to the medical students at Wright State, a much older and less maintained group of headstones lies just beyond. This little group of stones creates an illusion of peace with the looming forest as a backdrop. While one could be forgiven for stopping at the cemetery, a small path running down a hill into that deciduous backdrop has much more to offer. This is the best place to enter the woods. If you keep on this path for only a few moments, the first thing you'll find is a creek cutting through the trees. It's small and mostly dried up, but there are a few fish that call it home. Between the hours of four and seven, you can sometimes sneak up on a few deer, stopping for a drink. As you move on from the creek, the trails become more monotonous, and at a glance, boring. However, these small paths are better understood as a system of caves, not hiking trails. The dense leaves form patches and layers of semi-permeable cave wall. And despite the diversity in species, the color palette during the spring and summer is nearly entirely green and brown. Each tunnel has smaller branching tunnels and a mouth that opens to a new location. Just like a system of caves, these woods can become claustrophobic as each cave mouth leads to a new reminder of the surrounding man-made environment. Even within the trees, no matter where you go, there will still be intrusions from the outside world warning you that you're about to leave this little oasis. Like any other cave system, you have to search for details to get a full experience. Otherwise, it largely all looks the same. The large mossy trees form stalagmites that hold up the canopy. And those that don't play host to various forms of fungus and moss. The forest is mostly made up of walnut, oak, and maple trees. And you'll be hard pressed to find a stump or tree without something else growing on it. Each stump becomes its own little ecosystem, with spongy wood soaking up water to feed its moss. And as water rots the wood away, colonies of fungus clean up the debris. If you search for long enough, or stumble across the right tunnel, you'll find the bird watch. This structure is almost never used for watching birds, as its few feeders have remained empty for several years. This small enclosure now largely serves as a social space, for those who know about it. If you walk slowly and keep an eye out, you'll likely find these delightful pink wheat-like plants. These are Persicaria tinctoria, a type of knotweed whose leaves can be used to create indigo dye. You're also likely to find a lot of Moro's honeysuckle. This invasive species is a favorite food of most of the common animals you'll cross paths with in this forest, but is well known to be poisonous to humans. Another, far less common species you'll find is the American beauty berry. It's related to mint and also serves as a source of food for wildlife. The roots of this plant have been used by Native Americans to treat stomach aches and dysentery. A species of berry that is edible, however exceedingly rare in these tunnels, is wild strawberries. You may find a few dotting the edges of trails if you're lucky enough to beat the deer to them. These tunnels are a microcosm of a mostly lost but once thriving ecosystem in the Dayton area. 
the much larger, thriving forests which resemble this have mostly been paved over, settled on, or turned into farmland. This small biology preserve hosts just a few native species to identify and offer a taste of the natural environments that no longer exist here. There is a somewhat liminal quality to these short green tunnels, especially when interrupted by man-made elements. A transition in both space and time, which embodies the transition from wild to man-made spaces. While this place does offer a brief escape from the outside world, the unending pavement, there's still an inevitable conclusion that no matter which way you wander, eventually the trees will end. <laughs>